Good morning, my tubies, my TikTokers, and my tweeters. Uh, today is Monday, October 17th. It's going to be a great day. We're going to start our week off. I'm going on vacation on the 21st, and I'm looking forward to it. Trust and believe, honey. All right. Now for our image and power thoughts for the day, which is coming from Matthew's chapter 27. God, I can't wait till Friday. <laughs> okay, Jesus is taking, we're reading from the easy, easy read version. Jesus is taken to Governor Pilate. Early the next morning, all the leading priests and older leaders of the people met and decided to kill Jesus. Oh God, how sick is this? They tied him, led him away, and hand him over to Pilate the governor. Judas kills himself. Uh, verse 3. Judas saw that they had decided to kill Jesus. He was the one who had handed him over. When he saw what happened, he was very sorry for what he had done. So he took the 30 silver coins back to the leading priests and the older leaders. Judas said, I send, I hand over to you an innocent man to be killed. The Jewish leaders answered, we don't care. That's a problem for you, not us. <clears throat> so Judas threw the money into the temple. Then he went out from there and he hanged himself. So we see how Judas Iscariot died. He hung himself as he should have. Verse six, the leading priest picked up the silver coins at the temple. They said, our law does not allow us to keep this money with the temple money because this money has paid for a man's death. So they decided to use the money to buy a field called Potter's, Potter's Field. This field would be a place to bury people who died while visiting in Jerusalem. That is why that field is still called the Field of Blood. This showed the full meaning of what Jeremiah the prophet said. They took 30 silver coins. That was how much, that was how much the people of Israel decided to pay for his life. They used those 30 coins to buy the potter's field as the Lord command me. Moving on to verse 11, Governor Pilate questions Jesus. Jesus stood before Pilate, the governor, who asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, yes, that's right. Hold on, let me get my coffee. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I had some damn good coffee. Then when the leading priests and the older Jewish leaders made their accusations against Jesus, he said nothing. So Pilate said to him, don't you hear all these charges they are making against you? Why don't you answer? <clears throat> but Jesus did not say anything. And this really surprised the governor. Verse 15, Pilate tries but fails to free Jesus. Every year at Passover time, the governor would free one prisoner, whichever one of the people wanted him to free. At that time, there was a man in prison who was known to be very bad. His name was Barabbas. When a crowd gathered, Pilate said to them, I will free one man for you. Which one of you want me to, which one do you want me to free? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Pilate knew that they had handed Jesus over to him because they were jealous of him. While Pilate was sitting there in the place for judging, his wife sent a message to him. It said, don't do anything with that man. He is not guilty. Last night, I had a dream about him and it troubled me very much. But the leading priests and older Jewish leaders told the people to ask for Barabbas to be set free and for Jesus to be killed. Pilate said, I have Barabbas and Jesus. Which one do you want me to set free for you? The people answered, Barabbas. 
Pilate asked, asked, so what should I do with Jesus, the one called the Messiah? All the people said, kill him on a cross. <clears throat> of course, people don't like hearing the truth. They'd rather see you dead. Pilate asked, why do you want me to kill him? What wrong has he done? But they shouted louder, kill him on the cross, kill him on the cross. Pilate saw that there was nothing he could do to make the people change. In fact, it looked as if there would be a riot. So he took some water and washed his hands in front of them all. He said, <clears throat> I am not guilty of this man's death. You are the ones who are doing it. The people answered, we will take full responsibility for his death. You can blame us and even our children. Then Pilate set Barabbas free and he told some soldiers to beat Jesus with whips. Then he hand him over to the soldiers to be killed on a cross. Moving on to verse 27, Pilate's soldiers make fun of Jesus. Then Pilate's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's palace. All the soldiers gathered around him. They took off Jesus' clothes and put a red robe on him. Then they made a crown from thorny branches and put it on his head. And they put a sack, <clears throat> they put a stick in his right hand. Then they bowed before him, making fun of him. They said, we salute you, king of the Jews. They spit on him. Then they took his stick and kept hitting him on the head with it. This is ridiculous, man. After they finished making fun of him, the soldiers took off the robe and put his own clothes on him again. Then they led him away to be killed on a cross. Moving on to verse 32, Jesus is nailed to a cross. The soldiers were going out of the city with Jesus. They saw a man from Cyrene named Simon and they forced him to carry Jesus' cross. They came to the place called Golotha, which means the place of skull. The other soldiers gave Jesus some wine mixed with gall, but when he tasted, he refused to drink it. The soldiers nailed Jesus to a cross. Then they threw dice to divide his clothes between them. The soldiers stayed there to guard him. They put a sign above his head with the charge against him written on it, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two criminals were nailed, two crosses beside Jesus, one on the right and the other on the left. People walked by and shouted insults at Jesus. They shook their heads and said, you said you could destroy the temple and build it again in three days. So save yourself. Come down from that cross if you really are the son of God. The leading priests, the teachers of the law, and the older Jewish leaders were also there. They made fun of Jesus the same as the other people did. They said he saved others, but he can't even save himself. People say he is the king of Israel. If he is the king, he should come down from that cross. Then we will believe in him. He trusted God. So let God save him now. If God really wants him, he really said, I am the son of God. And in the same way, the criminals on the crosses beside Jesus also insulted him. Moving on to verse 45, Jesus dies. At noon, the whole country became dark. The darkness continued for three hours. After three o'clock, Jesus cried out, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachita. This means, my God, my God, why have you left me alone? Why have you forsaken me? He felt that God, Jehovah, had left him. He felt the loss of his father. Or so he felt, he, he, he assumed. Some of the people standing there heard this. They said, he is calling Elijah. Quickly, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled the sponge with sour wine and tied the sponge to a stick. Then he used the stick to give the sponge to Jesus to give him a drink from it. But the other said, don't bother him. We want to see if Elijah will come to save him. Again, Jesus cried out loudly. He cried out loudly. 
and then he died. I'm glad his pain was over, you know, he did it. He fulfilled what he came to fulfill for our, for us. He went through all of that for us. Verse 51, when Jesus died, the curtain in the temple was torn into two pieces. The tear started at the top and tore all the way to the bottom. Also, the earth shook and rocks were broken. The graves opened and many of God's people who had died were raised from death. They came out of the graves and after Jesus was raised from death, they went into the holy city and many people saw them. The army officer and the soldiers guarding Jesus saw this earthquake and everything that happened. They were very afraid and said, he really was the son of God. Yes, he was, you fools. Many women were standing away from the cross watching. These were the women who had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for him. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of James and John were there. Verse 57, Jesus is bur buried. That evening, a rich man named Joseph came to Jerusalem. He was a follower of Jesus from the town of Amaritha. He went to Pilate and asked to have Jesus' body. Pilate gave orders for the soldiers to give Jesus' body to him. Then Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a new, living, in new linen cloth. He put Jesus' body in a new tomb that he had dug in a wall of rock. Then he closed the tomb by rolling a very large stone to cover the entrance. After he did this, he went away. Mary Magdalene and the other women named Mary were sitting near the tomb. The tomb of Jesus is guarded. Verse 62. That day was the day called Preparation Day. The next day, the leading priests and the Pharisees <laughs> went to Pilate. <coughs> they said, Sir, we remember that while that liar was still alive, he said, I will rise from death in three days. So give the order for the tomb to be guarded well for three days. His followers might come and try to steal the body. Then they could tell everyone that he has risen from death. That lie will be even worse than what they said about him before. Pilate said, take some soldiers and go guard the tomb the best way you know. So they all went to the tomb and made it safe from thieves. They did this by sealing the stone in the entrance and putting soldiers there to guard it. And there you have it, my darlings, our empowerment for today. As we see, Jesus Christ went through so much. He went through so much just uh, for us. He loves us so much. And in order for us to be able to be cleansed from our sins, this had to transpire. Um, and because of Jesus Christ, we are able to approach our Heavenly Father, Jehovah, through prayer. Because of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven for our sins when we repent and change our ways and confess our sins to one another. And to what? What did Jesus do all this for? He wants us to love each other. The two greatest commands is to love your Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to secondly, love each other. Those are the two commands that we are under this day and age. And now it's time, my darlings, for your power thought for the day. Power thought. The power thought, what I think is really wise for you to focus on today, is prayer is such a privilege and it should be enjoyed. We should never approach prayer or studying God's word as an obligation or something to be dreaded. We should always approach it as a privilege to be enjoyed. The word of God and the word of Jesus Christ is a medicine for our souls. And we should take our medicine regularly, just as a person who needs physical healing should do. Jehovah God and Jesus medicine has unlimited refills and its side effects are life, healing, strength, joy, and restoration. And that's 
beautiful. So we should be honored and we should see prayer as a privilege, something that we look forward to. I know I pray. I don't know how many times a day I pray. I pray all throughout my day, all throughout it. And then after I finish praying to Jehovah, I talk to Jesus Christ all throughout my day. I talk to him about everything. Sometimes I talk to him so much. I'm like, I know he must be sick of me. <laughs> like, you know, but these are my best friends. Anyway, your uh, Bible trivia question. Who was the man who lost his family and all that he owned, yet never lost his faith in God? You can find that at 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 2 through 6. 1, 2, 3. If you said Job, you are correct. <clears throat> Next question. I am one of God's prophets. God told me to hide by a river and ravens would feed me morning and night. Who am I? You could find that at Job chapter 1, verse 1 through 22. 1, 2, 3. It was Elijah. So there you have it, my darlings, for today to start your week. That's your spiritual food, just like you eat physical food every day to strengthen your body. You definitely need spiritual food to strengthen your body and your mind. And I want you to have a great day because it's going to be a great day. Why? Because we have a positive attitude and it's going to be a great day because you know, and I know, that Jehovah and Jesus Christ love you very much and so do I. Talk to you tomorrow if it's Jehovah and Jesus' will.